So much stuff has happened with me being gone for several days. It's so good to be back here at the Reptarium. Good morning, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is amazing. It's certainly amazing for me because I get to be back here at my reptile zoo and I see all the animals, but there is one animal that I wanted to check on. Now, Gemma was actually gravid and was due to lay within the last day or two, but something strange has happened. And I'm telling you, I've taken you guys on this journey and it really makes me feel almost like I don't know what I'm doing, right? Because constantly I'm like, I think this, I think that, I think this, I think that, and I am completely confused. Again, she was supposed to lay, or she was due to lay, basically, here in the last day, two, and sometimes they can go three, four, five days after, stuff like that, but guess what? She is deep in shed. So we talk about pre-ovulation sheds, we talk about pre-lay sheds, and it looked like there was a pre-ovulation shed, and then a pre-lay shed, and then 30 days from them, on average, that's when you're gonna get a clutch of eggs, which again, is about now. But now she's back in shed again. And this is what is so bizarre to me, because now I don't know what's going on. I can't imagine that she's into another pre-lay shed. Now what might be happening is she might be reabsorbing her eggs, basically, and that does happen with ball pythons. Again, I don't have as much confidence in my retic ability, because I've only bred retics a handful of times, and it's always went completely like every other breeding before. Gemma has thrown me for a loop, but with ball pythons this can happen where they'll actually go through like a pre-ovulation shed, then they'll go through a pre-lay shed, and then sometimes they start to reabsorb and go through another shed, and then they start eating after that. She's been off food for like three and a half months now, which again is what happens with gravid females, and I thought, okay, she was gonna lay a clutch of eggs. She still looks pretty darn fat, guys. I mean, she looks big, but at the same time, there's no way that she's gonna lay anytime soon because of pre-lay shed. So now she's, one of two things can happen. She's gonna shed, she's gonna absorb, and she's gonna eat, or she's gonna lay in 30 days. I am completely confused about this girl, and coming back, I was expecting to get eggs any minute, and instead, I've got a snake in shed. So uh, yeah, you know, that's the way it goes. But nevertheless, still happy to be back here at the Reptarium. Guys, remember, just when I left, the one thing I was really nervous about, of course, was Brillo. We had redone Brillo's enclosure, and then I was gone. So if something didn't go right when I was gone, I don't know exactly what was going on. So sure enough, Lori said things were going well. And you know, honestly, it looks pretty decent. You can see a little bit where the cement is, but it blends pretty good. And the thing that's nice is they've been saying that Brillo has been super good, not been digging, not been getting into the cement at all, which is cool. As a matter of fact, before you could see there were little styrofoam pieces. Hi, Brillo. Did you miss me, buddy? Did you miss me? I loved you. I missed you too, big boy. What are you doing, silly monkey? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see him. Oh, I love him so, so much. I know no Brillo baby, but you used to see like these little styrofoam pieces all over his cage and that's what he would do is basically dig into the styrofoam. Now that it's cemented out, he's not digging anymore, which is really good. I know buddy, I'm so happy to see you too. You're so good. So it's cool that the cement work, it doesn't look bad. Again, you can see a little bit of discoloration here, but it doesn't look like really bad. You know, I mean, it kind of blends in pretty well and now he's not able to dig through this stuff. Of course, if he gets up high here, we may have to re-cement up here, but so far it's been over a week and he hasn't dug at all, which is really cool. So Brillo, you've been a good boy. And again, he gets so much love from all of us every single day. He's running around like a madman, getting all kinds of enrichment and we love him. And this gives me an opportunity now that I've kind of done the cement to have a little bit more confidence when I build Brillo's actual new enclosure in the expansion. So now I know kind of how to do cement a little bit, if that makes any sense. And, and uh, it's not like I'm an expert by a long shot. And that's gonna be a much bigger job because he's gonna have a much larger enclosure, literally probably like eight or 10 foot round enclosure which is going to be pretty cool for him oval or something on that line so uh, super happy that I could see my god Brillo again number one and super happy that he hasn't been a naughty boy anymore you guys have been killing on the reptile army swag lately so I appreciate you if you guys want some reptile army merch join the army of course it's for good cause on top of everything else and up until Christmas of course I'm giving personal shout outs to every single person that orders so you will get a personal video message from me every time you order reptile army you can go to reptilearmy.com uh, I appreciate Appreciate you guys and all of your support. You're awesome. So obviously we have a bunch of tugs in our VIP area. The reason for that was is that while I was gone, the work was getting done. You know, the work doesn't stop when I leave. As a matter of fact, the work probably gets harder when I leave. And uh, Lori's always on top of it. We had to get the colubrids into brumation. So these are just the last tubs that need to be clean. Everything should be revamped. So let's go take a look inside and I'll show you what's going on. So obviously, as you can see, it's actually dark in here now. It's gonna be dark in here for three months. During brumation, basically, you know, they're gonna climb into a little den. They're gonna burrow down and they're not gonna come out literally maybe but for water, right? So obviously all of these enclosures have fresh water. In them. Now they're completely clean. You can see they're still alert you know they're not like asleep to the point where they don't move around when I open the enclosure they're gonna see hey what's going on and 
stuff like that. But all of these enclosures now are spotless clean. They have fresh water in them. The room is at about 62 degrees. We're going to drop it down to about the upper 50s. And basically just how we do that is this pipe here is attached to this fan right here that is actually attached to a thermostat and it draws air from outside. Obviously it's cold outside. It's winter, right? So what happens is it draws cold air until it hits whatever degree we want it to hit and then uh, it shuts off and that's what keeps it at about, you know, 55 degrees, you know, 60 degrees at the most. So these guys are actually brewmating for the next three, two and a half to three months, let's say. Then they come out and then the breeding season starts. So I'm going to miss these cute little monkeys, but uh, it is good to have them down and gearing up for the next breeding season. Just coming back and seeing all my animals is what it's all about. I mean, you know, I miss them so much. It was so cool to see other people's animals, but coming back and seeing, you know, Perdita looking absolutely gorgeous up in her tree. I mean, that's what it's all about to me. It's just, uh, I'll spend all day just kind of walking around, just kind of enjoying these animals as much as uh, I do. I mean, I missed them so, so much. So definitely cool. And Perdita is looking gorgeous. Of course, the main reason we went down to Florida, not to mention we wanted to tool around and things, was for Croc Fest. And of course, that was conservation for Orinoco crocodiles. That's what we were raising money for. And I got this really cool rock. You guys know that people come to the Reptarium, they paint rocks all the time, and they, you know, kind of put them all over the place. So I think this will be a good addition to our rock collection here. And I'm just going to literally stuff it right here so people find it and say, like, what does that mean? And the thing that's cool is that people will see that and be like, what is Croc Fest? And I could talk to them about conservation when it comes to Orinoco crocodiles or the next time there'll be another species of crocodile that we'll be raising money for. So Crocfest was definitely awesome. Uh, it was definitely an amazing time and we raised over $60,000 for Orinoco Croc Research. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. This is so crazy, guys. As I was gone, you know, so many animals seemed to grow a lot, but this particular animal, Flaming Hot Cheeto, shrunk to half its size. I don't know what happened. No, the truth is, this is actually Clementine, guys. This is a new bearded dragon that Lori surprised me with when I got home. You guys know that we're kind of building an educational kind of group of animals that won't be on display here at the zoo that, you know, just so that when we're going to zoo to use and birthday parties and stuff like that, school events, that we don't have to actually take the animals from the Reptarium itself. Uh, so this is another animal to add to this. This is now the second bearded dragon that is in that group. We want to build three groups of animals because our educational side is growing quick and, and we know that in the future, Future, things are going to be even more crazy when schools kind of open up for us to come back in so uh, it is awesome this is beautiful I guess someone came by and actually dropped it off as a present so whoever that was I'm sorry I don't know who you are thank you so much this is amazing what a beautiful beautiful bearded dragon I mean it's just like flaming hot but again this guy's name is Clementine a couple other things showed up while I was gone too what is this one this right here let's take it oh, out and see it see. I love these things I tell you what you know I'm not exactly always like the best with bugs but for some reason this particular type of stuff is cool. It's a stick bug, right? Yes, yeah, so this is a Diaphrodes gigantea. So it's a uh, otherwise known as a green bean stick bug. Right? Green bean, like, <laughs> it just makes sense, it makes, right? Yeah, it does look like one. So this is actually a female here. Okay. They are actually sexually dimorphic. So males are brown with wings and females look green like this. Interesting. Um, so they, they, and also all males are incredibly smaller, just like tarantulas actually. Oh, okay. But they're all over the Caribbean islands, mainly found in Granada. Usually that's where they're coming from when they're nice. being imported here. They're usually coming from Granada. How long do they usually live? About a couple years. Couple typically. years. Okay, so this one's probably already an adult, I would imagine. Huh? Yeah, but I mean, they uh, like they they grow between five inches and maybe even five four inches, just about. Okay, interesting. They move so weird. I, like I said, I love stick bugs, but there's not a lot of stick bugs that you can get in the U.S. So that's pretty cool. Like some of the stuff down in Australia, those stick bugs are ridiculous. Oh my but God. this thing is so dope. But uh, this is the only bug we added. We actually added a couple other crazy ones too. <laughs> and take a look at these. I mean, these are what leaf bugs. Yeah, these are actually another phasmid like stick bugs but just another different one leaf bugs like you said oh but these gosh. these are actually from southeast asia southeast asia and they look cool. like a leaf Ooh. Where you got, look at that. I mean, talk about nature in its finest camouflage right there. That is incredible. And this is a full grown adult or they get bigger? So this is actually an adult. Yeah, this is a full grown adult. They don't get much bigger than this, but um, man, they are beautiful. They're not only green, but they actually do have that brown edging like a dead leaf. Yeah, like a dead leaf. Which is yeah. the most coolest thing to me because it's just like, wow, millions of years of evolution right there just Definitely. in the making. It's so cool that this thing has developed that, that way. That is so cool. And if you notice when they move, you know, both of them, when they move, they kind of shake a little bit. And that's their way of like looking like wind, right? You know, so again, these things would 
with camouflage. I mean, if you were in a, a forest and you saw this, there's no way you would think this was a bug. <laughs> Looks just like a leaf. So got a couple new educational animals here at the Reptarium that are gonna be really cool. I know kids are gonna love them. We certainly learned a whole lot about Aldalber tortoises and Galapagos tortoises on this trip, especially from especially from Sam from Iguana and Tortoise down there in Florida. I mean, what a wealth of knowledge. And now I feel like I have a lot better idea of what we need to do with Matilda in the future so that she's happy and healthy and, and continues to grow and that she doesn't have any problems with her legs. You know, he talked about how, you know, that the legs can kind of bud if she doesn't have the right nutrition. So we talked a lot about nutrition. We talked a lot about the new enclosure, what she needs and stuff like that. So uh, Matilda's amazing. And uh, I tell you what, I am so happy we got a chance to meet with someone so knowledgeable about these animals. He lives and breathes nothing but tortoises and iguanas. And I tell you what, Matilda is amazing. And we found out too that the hay that we switched to, we used to Timothy hay, but I was so allergic to it. I was having massive allergic reactions. And we switched to a more type of hay, which ironically enough is better for them. So they love to eat the hay and it's actually really good for them from the roughage standpoint. So now I know a lot more about Matilda. I'm pretty excited about the future for sure. Can't wait to build her new enclosure with the expansion. Well, the time has come, Jessica. Our last geckos of the year hatching. So uh, what do we get? So we've got pretty, nothing spectacular actually. We've got a normal and it looks like uh, they're probably both had eclipse because I know the okay. mom is an eclipse. But so yeah, these are the last, the last two leopard geckos of the year. Yeah. Hatched out, no more eggs there. These are all the eggs. Well, these aren't all the eggs, but there's a lot of the eggs. And oh, they're, they're on the run, run now. Run. Oh, they're, run, run, be free. Run. Okay, we're gonna let the last geckos loose of the year. So uh, that's awesome. So like I said, we had a good year, good job. You happy that they're down in formation? Yes, I am happy. And then we didn't produce as many this year either. Yeah, so, so it's been a lot easier. A lot easier, that's right. But that's it, all done with leopard geckos. But we have tons. We had some really cool stuff. Uh, definitely had some bangers produced this year. So good job and uh, good luck next year. Awesome. <laughs> you guys are always spoiling us on Christmas. We have, uh, let's see, we have a gift. The Reptarium family, I've been watching your videos for about a year and saw this ornament. It reminds me of RJ, Lori. <laughs> Can you find a spot on the tree for this one? Let's take a look and see what it is. Oh my goodness. And this is from uh, oh Anna Taylor from Illinois. We know Anna. I know her. Do you? Yeah, she uh, sent us the alligator ornament. I don't know if it's an alligator well, ornament. Well, it, it reminded of RJ, so. Let's see, oh, I like it. <laughs> Look at that. Wait, we actually have, we actually this. have this ornament. We have, we have two oh, of these. Now we have three. That's good, well, I could do a whole tree of these, <laughs> to be honest yes, with you. Yes. But listen, there's, a whole no there's another one. We might have four now. No. <laughs> Oh my God, it's the same <laughs> thing. We are in <laughs> the <Yeah. laughs> Let's do a whole tree of these. Yeah, we what? definitely can. I love it. <laughs> thank you so much. So yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get these on the tree here. So thank you, that was awesome. Can someone send us a hundred of these? So hundred? that we can have a yeah, full tree. A whole tree. Okay, this one is, uh, let's see. Well, this is our buddy O'Malley. This is awesome. Oh, Sean. So check that. Yeah, it's awesome. Check Shana. this out. O'Malley's Morphs. That's it. That's a nice Look hoodie, man. Thank you so much. I think that- uh, Stickers. And some stickers. So thank you, bro. Look at the back. Check that out. Whoa, Represent. Very cool. Nice. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate you so much. Uh, link in the description. I'll hit up. He's an amazing dude. So good to be back at the Reptarium. I hope that you guys enjoyed the journey. If you did, let me know in the comments what you liked the most. But it is nice to be back here. And uh, for the holidays, it's going to be amazing. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Right there is a playlist. You could watch one or two other videos that would mean the world to me. You know what else would mean the world to me? Right here. Hit that subscription button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you in the next one.